Oh, it's uh, 10 o'clock, so we're going to get started now. We'd like to welcome you to the first California Department of Motor Vehicles public workshop related to the development of regulations governing the procedures for the issuance of original driver's licenses to people who are in the United States but unable to submit satisfactory proof to the department that their presence in the United States is authorized under federal law. I'm Brian Soublé, Assistant Chief Counsel of the Legal Affairs Division of the Department of Motor Vehicles. With me on the stage is Christian Tripke. She's the chief of our program and policy development branch of, our, of the department's licensing and operations division. Christian is here to summarize the department's consultations with interested parties, which is a provision that was required specifically in AB 60. We're here today because the Administrative Procedures Act, or the APA, establishes the basic procedural requirements that must be followed by a state agency or department to adopt any regulation to implement, interpret, or make specific the laws enforced or administered by that agency or department. The mandatory provisions of the APA set forth the procedural guidelines and the requirements that must be followed by the department in the development of a regulation. We are here today because one of the APA's mandatory provisions is that when a rulemaking in action involves complex proposals, the department must involve parties who would be subject to the proposed regulation in public discussions prior to the, the publication of the proposed text of the regulation. The purpose of this hearing is to allow people to participate in discussions that will facilitate the development of those regulations. On our housekeeping items, um, the, the most important thing is to remember that we have a sign-in table at the back of the auditorium. If you have not already done so, please make sure you sign in and provide your contact information. The sign-in list will put you on our contact list so that you can receive further information as we go through the regulatory process. The proceedings today are being transcribed and we will have a Spanish language uh, translator. Consequently, we need to keep in mind that only one person can speak at a time so that we can get an accurate record of what is said here today. The transcript will become a part of the public record of this workshop. We are guests here in the Secretary of State's auditorium and we appreciate the assistance from the staff of the Secretary of State's office who helped us put on this workshop this morning. To ensure an orderly workshop, we have prepared an agenda which is available at the sign-in table. We will be discussing the topics in the order presented on the agenda. I will be inviting your comments on the agenda topics. Please keep your comments limited to the section that we're talking about at the time. If for any reason you have an additional comments on a topic that had been previously discussed, there will be time at the end of the workshop for you to provide general comments on any of the four topics listed on the agenda. We weren't able to anticipate the number of people who would be attending today, and the workshop is scheduled to conclude at 4 o'clock. If all attendees who, have, uh, who wish to comment have provided their comment, we may conclude earlier. However, we are not able to extend the, uh, the workshop beyond the scheduled end time. For this reason, we may have to limit the length of time each participant has to comment on a particular agenda topic. There are many people who have already met with and participated in consultations with the department, which will be summarized by Mrs. Tripke. Uh, those participants should keep in mind that there are others who have not had the opportunity to provide comments to the department and the department is already aware of your previously expressed concerns. We welcome you to provide written materials. You can leave them with the staff at the sign-in table. Your written materials will become part of the record of this workshop. Participation in this workshop, however, is in addition to and not a substitution for the petition and, uh, participation in the formal rulemaking process. Comments, both oral and written, received in connection with this workshop will not necessarily be included in the formal rulemaking file. Similarly, the department is not required by the APA to respond to the comments it receives at this hearing. Therefore, if you wish to have comments included in the rulemaking file or to require the department to respond to your comments as part of the process by which it adopts the regulations, you must present your comments during the formal rulemaking uh, proceeding. 
that will be uh, noticed in a, a notice of proposed text that will be published um, at some point in the next few months. At that time, the formal rulemaking proceeding will begin and, you will, and there will be a comment period in which you will be able to submit comments to the department. We have a microphone here in the front on my left in the auditorium. I'll invite you up to come forward and speak uh, at that microphone when you wish to provide uh, comments on a topic. Um, please use the microphone when you come forward. We're also doing a webcast of the workshop this morning and we welcome our webcast viewers. If you're viewing on the internet and would like to submit written comments, you can email your comments to the email address on the bottom of the agenda. That would also go for anyone else who is present here in attendance. The email address is lregulations, all one word, at dmv.ca.gov. All comments from those in attendance or those viewing on the webcast and any other interested party must be submitted by 5 p.m. January 29th. Now that we've discussed all the rules, we can move on to the reason why we're all here. Assembly Bill 1219 from the last legislative session amended California Vehicle Code sections 1653.5, 12801, 12801.5, and added sections 12801.9, 12801.10, and 12801.11, requiring the Department of Motor Vehicles to begin issuing, issuing original driver's licenses to people who cannot provide proof of that their presence in the United States is authorized under federal law. We're required to do that no later than January 1, 2015, or an earlier date if the DMV director determines that the department is prepared to issue those licenses. We are here today to obtain comments on the four specific requirements of AB 60 as set forth in Vehicle Code Section 12801.9 and noted on the agenda. At this time, I would like Kristen Tripke to give us a summary of the department's meetings to date with interested parties. Uh, thank you, Brian. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you all for attending this pre-notice workshop regarding the development of regulations for Assembly Bill 60. Since the signing of Assembly Bill 60 by Governor Brown, the DMV has been contacted by many individuals interested in this topic. Specifically, DMV has met throughout the state with advocacy groups, law enforcement representatives, foreign consulates, labor groups, and many other interested parties. These meetings have been very beneficial to the department as we prepare to implement AB 60 by January 1, 2015. We appreciate the attendees' passion, energy, and insight, as well as the time they spent to inform us of their constituents' challenges and concerns. During these meetings, we learned a number of key points of information that will help us. We learned it may be difficult, costly, and time-consuming to obtain the documents outlined in AB 60. We discussed possible alternative documents, such as baptismal certificates, school transcripts, and immunization papers. We learned about the possible issue with certain naming conventions and the effect that may have on providing documentation. We heard the concern that AB 60 applicants may be discriminated against or even deported. We conveyed our desire to work together and learn from each other. The DMV was very pleased to hear how many of the organizations are willing to assist us in implementing AB 60. We expressed the importance of maintaining our current security standards to prevent driver license fraud and identity theft. This would enable us to continue to meet our goal of one license, one record, one identity. We conveyed the importance of privacy and security in our current processes and that we will ensure the same high standards are met as we move forward with implementing AB 60. In closing, I just wanted to thank you again for your continued interest and input. We look forward to continuing to work with you to ensure the successful implementation of AB 60. I'd like to turn it back to Brian. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. Many of you may not be familiar with the formal rulemaking or regulatory process, and I'd like to take a few minutes to briefly outline that process for you. As I mentioned earlier, the rulemaking process is governed by the provisions of the Administrative Procedures Act, or the APA, which can be found in the Government Code. Today's workshop is intended to be general in nature and to solicit your ideas 
on addressing the tasks facing the department and drafting those regulations. Your input is valuable to us as it will assist us in conceptualizing what we need to do and what we need to include in the regulations. We will be conducting additional public workshops in the Los Angeles area next month. I believe it's on February 13th. After that workshop, we will prepare a proposed set of regulations and will provide a public notice of that proposal in the California Notice Register. And we will either mail or email it to all parties who have, addressed, who have um, asked us to send them notification of our future actions, including those of you who signed in today. There will be a 45-day notice period, after which we will ex receive um, all written comments, and we will hold public hearings and solic solicit oral comments. If those comments lead to a revision of the proposal that we have put forth, and if necessary under the Administrative Procedures Act, we will provide an additional 15-day notice period of those changes. Once we have completed the rulemaking file, we will submit the regulations to the Office of Administrative Law, or OAL, for review and approval. Once approved by OAL, the regulations will go into effect as specified in the Vehicle Code. At this time, we're going to go ahead and start moving on to the topics that are listed in our agenda. Um, please remember to limit your comments to the topics that we're specifically speaking of at the time. Um, As this is a workshop to solicit your comments and ideas on the factors the department considers as it begins developing the regulations, I'm now going to open our discussion on the documents that would be acceptable for the purposes of establishing, establishing identity and residency in California. Uh, AB 60, or as enacted Vehicle Code Section 12801.9, provides a, a list of documents that the department would be required to accept to prove identity and residency. At this time, I would like to submit comments on documents additional to those listed in 12801.9 that the department should consider as proof of identity and residency. If you would like to make comments, we'll have one speaker at a time come forward to the microphone that's here. Um, when you come to the microphone, please state your full name and spell your name so that the reporter can get it adequately on the record. So if there's anyone who would like to come forward and give us some, some of their ideas or comments on documents that the department would accept, I invite you to come forward right now to the microphone that's here on the Just f feel free to come forward. Um, again, state your name and spell your name for the record. Okay. Now the whole purpose of this workshop is in order to get comments from people. And if we don't have, if people don't come forward, we basically will not have a successful workshop. So thank you. Yeah. Hi there. Uh, my name is Veronica Diaz, V-E-R-O-N-I-C-A, last name D-I-A-Z. And I'm with Teamsters Joint Council 7. We represent about 100,000 blue-collar uh, workers, um, a lot of them undocumented, a lot of them will benefit from AB60, so very excited about that. But I would encourage um, the use of union ID cards or union ledgers as acceptable proof. A lot of them have been working with that same employer for decades, so it's a long-standing record of um, presence in the U.S. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, I'm Maria Galvan, and I want to say thank you to having us today for the community is uh, very important. Can, can you just do us one favor yeah. and spell your name uh, for us? Uh, Maria, Maria Galvan. Yeah, and, huh? oh, I'm sorry, M-A-R-A-I-G-A-L-V-A-N. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, my point is, uh, I want uh, DMV accept like, uh, um, like an ID or something. Uh, many people came into the United States without, without uh, papers, without proof, or they don't have time to, to bring some documents. So it's good if you accept the, the birth certificate of the kids, like a proof. It's easy for us because uh, a lot of people have the children's here. 
and or any bill or gas, uh, any bill or cell phones. I think it's, it's going to be good and easy for us. Thank you Thank so much. You. And basically what she's suggesting is that we accept the birth certificates as well as uh, things like utility bills, which would help to establish residency. Birth, yes, the birth certificates of children. Exactly. Uh, good morning. My name is Francisco Moreno, F-R-A-N-C-I-S-C-O-M-O-R-E-N-O, -E with uh, COFEM, Council of Mexican Federation, C-O-F-E-M. And uh, in, uh, this, in this topic, uh, um, I, I would like to add uh, what Maria said. Uh, for uh, we represent uh, Mexicans uh, in the United States. We have more than 300,000 members in all the, the whole United States. And one of, one of, uh, of the questions that we have is that uh, the difficulty to have our birth certificates from some parts of Mexico uh, that are still not digital. Uh, well, in some states of Mexico, we have uh, already uh, the system, uh, digital systems uh, that we can get the birth certificate here. But in some other states, uh, it's, it's very, really difficult to get the birth certificate. And we would like uh, the DMV to consider that uh, to get these uh, birth certificates are, are going to be really hard for people in, in some places. Uh, thank you for, for now. Thank you. Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Ronald Coleman with the California Immigrant Policy Center, R-O-N-A-L-D-C-O-L-E-M-A-N. Um, I would just like to echo that I think um, union IDs are certainly something we think people can use. Also, birth certificates of uh, children, baptismal certificates where parents may have signed those documents, any type of school records where parents may have signed those documents on behalf of their children as well, uh, should be used to uh, allow people to prove identity. Also, if people have any type of employment IDs that, that could potentially be used. I think that that's certainly something that could allow uh, for uh, or to allow people to be able to um, uh, prove their identity. Also, I think that um, you know, we, we, we know that a lot of immigrants may have come from their country and fled their country in emergencies or disaster situations or violence. So I think potentially there could be an exception or a waiver process for certain types of documents that people are just unable to get all together. And you know, we, we do know that getting documents are certainly a problem for certain populations like uh, the homeless and uh, many other marginalized and vulnerable uh, groups. So we certainly think that um, in the absence of being able to show all of the documents that may be required, um, people should have some type of waiver or exception. Also, maybe look at using a combination of documents. Um, uh, uh, maybe, maybe it could be city IDs uh, in conjunction with uh, uh, baptismal certificates or, or other records that may come from um, uh, the uh, parent's connection to the child. We certainly think that rather than having a list of document requirements where it's uh, choose two or three, maybe you can match um, up various types of documents that are unconventional that but could, but could certainly prove uh, the identity of undocumented community members. So you Thank you. You know, let's have a, uh, a point where uh, an additional document would be able to, we'd be able to look to, to, to basically get that verification of right. the authenticity of, of another document. Right, exactly. We think that'll be helpful. I think, lastly, if I hadn't mentioned it already, already, if there's a, uh, a, an undocumented community member that may be attending an adult school themselves, uh, potentially that's certainly um, an ID that we should uh, be allowed to have as part of the process. I think anything that's coming from a hospital or some type of institution or uh, a school district is, are certainly documents that should be acceptable by the DMV, and um, you know, we, we do think that these are trusted institutions around the state and, and certainly could be used to, to prove identity for community members. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, good morning. My name is Flora Chantos, F-L-O-R-A. Last name C as in car, S as in school, O-N-T-O-S. I'm the lead immigration organizer with Placer People of Faith Together. We're a member of the PICO National Network, uh, one of the largest faith-based community organizing groups in the country. Uh, I'm here representing several of our uh, communities up just north of Sacramento who couldn't be here today, uh, given that it's during the work day. Um, we're very grateful that this opportunity is here to share these uh, concerns. Uh, we had several meetings in the last few weeks to talk about uh, what documents people had access to. Um, the main ones that people, um, our undocumented folks, supported 
uh, for proving identity were the birth certificate and the consular ID. Many of them have access to these. Um, anything that can be obtained from the Mexican consulate, they were, of course, strongly supportive of. Um, and in uh, second place was a passport, a foreign passport. For California residency, uh, there was a more in-depth discussion. Um, our members pointed out that many people live with family members and their name is not on the uh, contract or, or lease. And they really strongly advocated um, using anything that has their name and the date on it to prove their residency, a phone bill, uh, a photograph, uh, baptismal certificates, confirmation certificates from their parish. Uh, we really hope that we'll see um, church-related documents there since um, the you know, church uh, staff folks can, can verify when these life events happened. Um, these were the main documents that were mentioned, and we hope that uh, there are some meetings going on with the folks who went through the deferred action process. That was also a big move for finding documents for, for our dreamers, uh, and we think that there can be a lot learned from that to support this process. Thank, Thank you. Hello, my name is Kevin Valero, K-E-V-I-N-V-A-L-E-R-O. I'm a representative of the California Dream Network, which is an immigrant youth led organization from throughout the state. Um, first, I want to thank you, um, the state, for having you know, this workshop to hear our concerns. As um, even though a lot of youth were eligible for the deferred action, there's many who were not. So having a way to you know, prove their identifications um, that would be eligible for those youth would be school records, such as their transcripts or their school ID, as well as you know, vaccination reports that they can get you know, from a reputable um, institution, and also, you know, um, ATM cards like debit cards. Um, some are able to, you know, access those, and those would be, you know, forms of ID that, you know, our community who was left out of the deferred action process would be able to use in order to get these licenses. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, my name is Eric Vega, V-E-G-A. I'm with the Sacramento Immigration Alliance. Um, I endorse the idea of being flexible and the approach of mixing and matching so as to uh, find a way to identify people for purposes of the driver's license. Um, I have in my hand a uh, ID card from California State University. Mm -hmm. And students at the UC, CSU, and community colleges, you know, have their pictures taken and have identification. I think library cards are widely used by many peoples. I think when I looked in my wallet, I found a Costco card. And I think that those are so widely available and can be matched up to a verified that they're living at some place or that they've been in a community for a long period of time. So I think uh, um, all of those things um, go to this idea that you can put together uh, where people live and they've been a part of a community by taking a flexible um, approach. Thanks. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Good morning. Uh, Paul DeBuffer, P-A-U-L-D-E, capital B, A-U-F-E-R. I'm with Plaster People of Faith together. We're a federation of Pico, California. And I want some training for the rollout of uh, the Affordable Care Act and covered California. And for identification for that, at, at all levels, the county, the state, and federal government is accepting self-attestation. If you can't provide the documents, if you don't have the documents, you just write out a statement and sign your name to it. And DMV is sort of is taken, you know, like thumbprints. So there is, there's a way to make sure that there is a, a, a separate record, that it's not somebody else using somebody else's name. So thank you. Thank you. My name is Ruth Tina Harrell, R-U-T-H-T-I-N-A-J-E-R-O. I'm the Vice President of Baby Lula and a delegate for District 36. Um, what I see is a lot of uh, undocumented are not just from Mexico, so it is very hard to go to other states, three, four borders down, to get a birth certificate. But something that they can use is for minors, it can be the school ID since they have to be in school. For any adult, it can be um, any religion organization plus medical 
because they have to be current on their addresses any medical they can be combined together instead of just sending out birth certificate going to the councils and get their um, cards ID cards there being that there is a cost effective for them you know or costly for them as well thank you thank you and you're, you're raising a good point because we, we do recognize that people that are undocumented can come from any place in the world um, you know from from the Far East from the South Pacific um, from African nations, from, from Europe. So, so one of the things that we're trying to recognize is that this is an issue that's kind of a worldwide thing for us, and so we'd have to con contemplate what documents we would accept. Right, and see, even homeless, they always end up at a medical facility, mm -hmm. so that is a lot more accessible for them, and obviously they have their identities there versus just coming out with, uh, if they don't go to school for adults, then, but it's always a medical need even when they're homeless and they don't have a, a specific residence for a, you know, X amount of time. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Rita Medina, R-I-T-A, last name M-E-D-I-N-A, and I'm with Coalition for Humane Immigrant Rights of Los Angeles, CHIRLA. I want to echo a lot of the pieces that we've heard today. We really appreciate the DMV taking the time, and I'm sure this is just one of the many public comment um, meetings that we'll have, but also to support being creative and looking at a, a combination of documents. We heard from some folks talk about passports or um, matriculas, but I think we also need to take into reality the amount of people who are going to be coming to these consulate offices and also the length of time that it could take for folks to get things like a passport or a birth certificate. And this is about implementation. We want to make sure that it's an accessible process, but also timely and swift. Some of the other things that um, Chirla is also asking t for the DMV to consider, and that's been said, bank statements, debit cards, especially those with pictures on it, um, income tax documentation, anything with an ITIN, using that. Uh, nonprofit ID cards, there are certain nonprofits that have uh, members. Chirla, we're a membership base. We have um, several hundred members in our LA area, and can we get them nonprofit ID cards that have their name and their address and they're coming from our organization. Um, we also really support the idea of a waiver, especially for those who've been said, for those people who have fled their country or just don't have the paper trails. You know, as folks get older and we're dealing with an older generation of drivers, especially in California, where our immigrant population has been quite settled here for some time a paper trail may not be as accessible. We really uh, urge the DMV to look creatively into this, as I said, really look at DACA, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, as a model. You know, in some instances, people were pulling up Facebook posts and, and thinking about how to use technology in order to prove who they were as well. Again, thank you for the time and look forward to seeing you. Thank you. Welcome Ronald, back. Ronald Coleman on behalf of the California Immigrant Policy Center. Not really sure the format, so I apologize for coming up again. But I, one thing I forgot to mention was uh, taking a look at the Medi-Cal, emergency Medi-Cal identity and residency requirements. We do think that, that um, uh, that's certainly something that could uh, ease the burden for undocumented community members that are getting a license. So uh, we, we would just ask the DMV to, to look at those requirements for emergency Medi-Cal as they're drafting the regulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, Ricardo Martinez, R-I-C-A-R-D-O-M-A-R-T-I-N-E-Z. Uh, me gustaría comentar sobre los cobros, cobros adicionales que pueden ser elegibles sobre la tar, uh, tarifa I'm que... I'm going to ask you to stop for a moment because we're going to have the translator come forward to, to, to help us. I would like to talk about the uh, fees, the fees that you can implement um, with the charges that already exist to obtain a driver's license. Because I am interested in the possibility to charge more for the driver's license of someone that is undocumented compared with the regular driver's license. Um, 
as you probably already know, under AB 60, um, the department would be charging the fee that is currently charged for a driver's license. Um, the statute also gives us the opportunity that we may be charging an additional fee. There hasn't been a determination whether that will occur or what that would be. So at this time, we're, we're not discussing a fee uh, because there hasn't been a determination whether there will be an additional fee. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Job Lopez. First name J O B Lopez L O P E Z. First of all, I just want to thank you for organizing this workshop. Secondly, I would like to echo what everyone before me has said and expressed. I come from Mountain View, California, um, not in representation, but I am involved with um, organizations like the Day Worker Center in Mountain View, the May Day Committee in Mountain View, and I would like to echo some of their concerns. First of all, I deal daily with dozens of undocumented people who are in great need of a driver's license. And one of my requests will be for you, or who, whoever is gonna be involved in the process, to uh, when the time comes, to apply to the extent possible the sense of humanity, to take into account the human aspect of every man and woman who needs a driver's license to make their lives better. And just the realization of these workshops shows to me that you already are looking at the practical aspect of this whole issue and coming here and having us to use the microphone shows that you are considering how practical this is, and I thank you for that. One other request that i like to ask you, you just were talking about possible additional fee, possible not. If the need for an additional fee comes, I personally will understand the need for a fee because there will be expenses involved, but I, will ask to the extent possible that that fee will not be so high or so big that many of our brothers and sisters will be not able to pay that when they make eight dollars an hour, maybe four hours a day at Burger King or so on. And the last thing that I would like to say is, I forgot what was the last thing that I want you, to say. You know, if you so thank it. you, thank you very much. Oh, I now remember. <laughs> please, please, to the extent possible, may this to happen as soon as possible instead of waiting until Joan January 2015. Thank you. Thank you. Mi nombre es Mayela Razo, vengo de San Jose, California. My name is Mayela Razo, and I'm coming from San Jose, California. Last name is R-A-Z-O. When um, I knew that you were going to give the driver's license, I was very happy. Pero cuando re leí los requisitos, me desilusioné. But when I read uh, about the, re the requisites, then I, um, I was um, not happy. Porque yo no puedo conseguir la mayoría de los requisitos que, que pide. Because I'm unable to get the majority of the requests that you have there. Yo quiero um, que mi licencia, um, para las licencias regulares de otras personas no piden actas de matrimonio, cosas así. 
que yo no puedo conseguir. Uh, for the um, driver's license for other regular people, you don't ask, you don't request um, marriage certificates, things like that, that I'm unable to obtain. Y yo quisiera que fueran un poco más flexibles, sobre todo para las amas de casa que necesitamos manejar y no tenemos la documentación. And I would like you to be more flexible, especially for the homemakers that we need to make and we don't have the documentation. I'm just going to make one clarification. For we we currently do um, accept a list of documents um, for people who have um, legal presence. Uh, for example, marriage certificates, birth certificates, military records, things like that. So people who um, do have legal presence are required to submit documentation to us, which we are required to verify. So, thank you for your comment. Hello. Good morning. Uh, my name is Idania Peralta, IDA, and I A P S and Peter E R A L T A. I come from Our Lady of Guadalupe Church from San Jose, California. Um, I work there as a pastoral organizer. Uh, we have from 6,000 to 10,000 parishioner, and uh, the 80 percent are immigrants. From those 80 percent, um, 75 percent are undocumented. Uh, as Mayela mentioned, um, homemakers have a really hard time. Many of them come here in uh, difficult situations and it's really hard for them or for many family members to obtain the kind of documentations that you're requesting. So I would like to second um, uh, one of the points that someone has mentioned. If church can provide some documentations that you can utilize, I really appreciate it. And thank you very much for giving us this opportunity for our voices to be heard. Good morning. Um, Good morning. My name is Sandy, S-A-N-D-Y, Valenciano, V-A-L-E-N-C-I-A-N-O, and I'm with CJA, California Immigration Youth Justice Blinds. Um, and I also want to bring the concern of the translation within the audience. I think that that's something to be a little bit more mindful for the future LA. Um, and also um, stress the fact that it's very hard um, if for a Mexican consulate to even get ident a government identification through them. Um, and also stress the fact that um, Asian and Pacific Islanders, um, the renewal of their process, for example, their passports, they actually have to return to their country to be able to renew these documents. Um, some suggestions would be, um, like someone said, the bank records or even utility bills um, as proof of residency or identification. Um, and also maybe insurance, mobile insurance and other type of types of insurance would also be very useful in providing proof of residency or um, identification. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Did you want us to keep spelling our names, or is this just? Yeah, we have to, okay. because that's sure. that'll, that'll get it correct. No in the problem. Record. Rosa Akil, R-O-S-A, last name A-Q, no U, E-E-L. Um, uh, with uh, Pico, California, we're a statewide um, organizing network uh, that's congregation-based. We represent over 450,000 families in the state. And first, I do want to thank uh, the DMV for putting together these public meetings. I think they're really, really important, and so we certainly appreciate the opportunity to provide feedback. Um, certainly from a values perspective, we believe that driver's licenses are the absolute right thing to do. Um, and I just want to remind, I certainly want to echo all of the different um, creative solutions that folks are bringing to you all and really hope that as the regulations get written, that there is as much flexibility and creativity as possible because I also want to remind us about one of the primary objectives from the bill author and that was to make sure that everybody that was in California was driving safely. And so I think if we really want to achieve that objective as well and ensuring that folks are insured and know the rules of the road that there is as much flexibility as possible in making sure that folks have accessible documents to prove residency and identity. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, um, once again, thank you. My name is Estefania Hermosillo, E-S-T-E-F-A-N-I-A. -E Hermosillo is H-E-R-M-O-S-I-L-L-O. -L -L and so I'm a DACA recipient myself, and so I was recapping on the process of me getting my own documents. And um, I remember I went to the Mexican consulate, and uh, you pay a price there as well to get your passport and your matricula. And so when thinking about paying for the license, going and paying there, really, um, I want to echo the baptismal or confirmations from the church. 
I think uh, a lot of our community is very active in the church, and that would be a very good document to have. And really, uh, like Rosa said, um, I'm also part of Pico. And so like Rosa said, it's also uh, essential to have um, you know, as much creativity as possible to be able to have the flexibility and have as many people as possible driving with licenses. Let's not have um, documentation of identity be an issue. And so, yeah. Thank you. Uh, my name is Leonel Flores from Fresno, uh, UNIR, uh, Union of Immigrant Refugees, and also my first coalition for immigrants' rights. Uh, you know, that everybody wants, most of the people who, like me, that we don't have driver license. So, uh, you know, we want that DMV, uh, as soon as possible, implement uh, AB60. And we want, you know, we're asking the, the governor to declare a moratorium of car impounds until DMV implement AB60. We are struggling on this issue. Uh, we want to add two documents, or uh, one is the notarial letters, maybe with one or two signatures, you know, uh, some people can go to the notary to get a signature and to pay like 20, you know, it's, it's an example. Uh, other one could be the check stops, you know, with a letter of the company. Many companies, they don't provide an ID, they don't provide, uh, uh, etc. but they can provide a check stop with a letter from, from companies. Uh, other document that I, I don't remember, the core documents, you know, Who's, <laughs> who we don't have their license, they have a ticket. So we go to the court, we, we, we pay our fine. So uh, could be uh, documents who must be accepted for DMV. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, how you doing? <clears throat> My name is uh, Braulio Gonzalez. It's B-R-A-U-L-I-O Gonzalez, G-O-N-Z-A-L-E-Z. -E and I'm with the organization, it's uh, Youth United for Community Action in East Palo Alto, California, um, Yucca. And uh, I'm here to speak about a couple of things. Uh, First of all, thank you for having this meeting. I can't, you know, express how much uh, how much this space, uh, this safe space, means for our community, you know, and, and the folks that we that, that we represent, the immigrant community. But a couple of things. I know you made a comment before about cost, um, and 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 adding an additional cost. As I understand it right now, I think the uh, the cost for a regular ID cost around thirty to thirty five dollars. Uh, one of the young ladies mentioned, you know, that she is a, a deferred action recipient, as am I, and you know. Uh, Raising the cost or asking for additional price, a fee, means uh, coming out of pocket $100, $200 more, right, on top of the 35 plus fee if you had an additional fee. So I ask the DMV to be considerate and to, you know, to, to, to keep in mind the cost that's going to go into obtaining the documents that you guys require in order for you, for you to obtain the driver license. The, uh, the other thing, and I didn't see in the agenda, but I think it's worth mentioning, is the discriminatory process that folks are, are putting the cell, you know, it, because the driver license is, is marked or has that, you know, the distinguishment between a driver license and the driving, you know, uh, privilege license, it gives an opportunity for predatory police officers, and we understand that it's not everybody, not all the officers out there, but there are some who use that as a basis for discrimination, and so we, you know, we ask you to, to keep that in mind, if possible. Uh, another thing, you know, another thing uh, is the affidavits, right? The affidavit that you are asking to, for folks to sign, and that's a great concern. Uh, one, one concern that I hear from East Baltimore community residents is how is that affidavit, what, what, you know, how is the DMV going to be using that? Is it going to be shared with anybody? And there's a concern that if it's shared with, some, with, with you know, with folks, uh, agencies such as immigration, uh, you know, there's a, you know, there's a, there's a great fear. And so we ask that you make it very clear about how you use that affidavit and who it's going to be shared with. Um, lastly, uh, one of the things I was going to point out uh, um, in the in the law, um, it already states that the affidavit's not a public record. Cool. So that you know, if we if if and, and, the, and the other thing is, I mean, and it goes with with you know my last suggestion is these spaces create a, a an opportunity for the community to have a conversation with the Department of Vehicles. However, as you can tell, we have representatives from all, all throughout California. I've seen folks that I hadn't seen in a while from LA, and I'm in, I'm in Northern California, and that recognizes that there's you know there's a need for community members to be involved. We had uh, we you know Yuka did a couple of things to try to make sure that our community residents' voices are heard. Um, two of our community members were going to come 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 up with us today, but just last night he was pulled over for driving or, or, you know for a traffic violation. His tail light was broken, um, and he, he was on license. And so instead of him being here today to testify, he has to f figure out, he has to deal with what's going to happen with his vehicle, the expenses that, you know, that he has to pay uh, to get, you know, to, to recu recuperate his car. And so, you know, uh, Francisco's not here today. 
But what we did do is uh, we interviewed some of the community members and we took a couple images and a couple of quotes that we want to share with you. So the first one here on to my left is of a community member who's, uh, who's been discriminated by the police before. She, her name is Sonia and she reads, I'm really happy that I will finally be able to drive with a license. I worry about the possibility of discrimination that may happen because this driver's license will, be, will have markings. This puts my community, community and me at risk because we can't, we can't be discriminated against. I urge the DMV to set clear anti-discriminatory policies and accountability process to hold anyone who discriminates against us responsible. And the, uh, the other story is of a, you know, a father of two in East Palo Alto. He's, you know, he's undocumented and will benefit from, you know, from, uh, from this driver's license. And he says, as a father of two boys, I depend on driving to meet basic responsibilities. Take my son to school, take my, doc my toddler to doctor's appointments, shop for groceries as well as to drive to work. Like my wife, also, uh, like my wife, uh, like me, my wife is, uh, is not eligible for a driver's license. And it's stressful knowing that my wife and I are at risk of being stopped by the police, getting, car, getting my vehicle towed, and possibly being deported. The AB60 driver license will bring a little peace of mind to my family. He continues, I do have concerns about the affidavit that will be asked to sign once I apply. I question how this information will be, will be uh, shared and who it will be shared with. This information being shared can, be, can potentially limit a lot of us from, uh, from, you know, from applying, and it puts us in the immigration scope. So it's refreshing and a little comfort comfortable to hear that it's, you know, how this information, that this affidavit is, is it's outlined. And lastly, I want to ask you not to have only meetings in, in, in Sacramento and, 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 and in L.A. You know, the community in the Bay Area, they, they, they urge to have meetings with you. They want to hear, they want to, they want to make sure that their voice is heard. So I urge you to, you know, to welcome, and I'm willing to work with you to put a meeting together to make sure that these voices are heard. Thank you. Thank you. If you want to, um, and, and I'm not sure if that's your only copy of that, but if you want it to be part of our record, you can give it to one of the staff that oh, signed the table, and we will, we will put that as part of our record. Thank you. Thank you. So good afternoon, my, or good morning. I guess good morning. Uh, my name is Juan Gabriel, J-U-A-N, G, last name G-A-B-R, I E L. So one of the things that I was thinking about was because I'm from Guatemala, I'm also undocumented, but I am a recipient of DACA. Uh, what I was thinking was that um, last the last year, at the end of last year, I went to an, on a trip to D.C. for college visits, and I, and during that visit, we most of the, our stuff got stolen from the car, so my passport was in there. And once I called to uh, put a a, a claim on my passport back to the Guatemala consulate, they said that I couldn't get a new one because I had to go back to my country to uh, get a new passport. So I'm, I, I remember that somebody mentioned that from Asian uh, countries and also uh, Polynesian countries, they can't get a, uh, another passport unless they go back to the country. So that there are other countries that, that are that as well, like my country, Guatemala. Also, I was thinking of the I know that uh, many people are under the impression that many undocumented people don't pay taxes, but we do. Um, I also pay taxes even though I'm, er I'm barely 18 and I already work. Uh, but we pay taxes so we get an ITIN number and that basically tells us basically federally that they know who we are and they know uh, where we live, where we come from, all of our information is on there and that, that really can be falsified. So maybe consider that uh, as another option uh, of proof of identification and address. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Jeremy Barus, J-E-R-E-M-Y-B-A-R-O-U-S-S-E. -S -S -E. I'm the community organizer with SIREN, Services, Immigrant Rights, and Education Network in San Jose, California. I'm here today with my SIREN leaders and parishioners from the Our Lady of Guadalupe Church in San Jose. They come from the Seven Trees and Mayfair communities of East San Jose. And our nearest DMV office is an, on average of seven miles from our community. And you have to cross two freeways to get there, Highway 101 and Highway 280. Uh, we're urging that the DMV look at Senator Jim Bell's letter to the governor and to the DMV about opening a temporary field office in East San Jose predominantly the post office, the old post office at Jackson Avenue and Alam Rock Avenue. We feel that this will give uh, our communities a better access to getting to a DMV field office 
and they won't be uh, scared. They'll be able to come forward and, and apply and make the process a lot smoother. And in fact, you know, opening temporary field offices all over the state to communities so they can have easy access to a DMV in their neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you. And just for your information, we are considering some, some licensing processing centers. We haven't made any determination of where they will be yet, um, but that is something that is a, a, a concern that we're taking to heart. Great. Remember East San Jose. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Pedro Trujillo, uh, P-E-D-R-O, last name T-R-U-J-I-L-L-O, and I'm with the California Energy Network. I'm the California Energy Network statewide youth organizer, and uh, I myself am uh, an undocumented immigrant. My family um, is undocumented as well, so this is, uh, it's great to be here and, and know that this is uh, moving along. It actually means a lot to, to my family and, and, and our well-being, um, since my dad has had a car taken away in, in the past uh, due to being unlicensed. And uh, my, my uh, thing that I want to touch on was that uh, a couple of other speakers also mentioned was that um, the, the cost actually would make a, a difference uh, if, we, if we learn anything from deferred action is as, as we were um, getting a lot of students who, or a lot of young people who were applying this opportunity to get a work permit, um, we saw a, a huge need. And so it was just crammed and there wasn't enough service providers to help out all these uh, young people who, who saw this opportunity. But then, after a while, and we're talking about now, it's the lines, the lines have died. And so deferred action, it is, it is costly, right? It's, it's, it's a hefty fee. And only about less than half of the expected uh, eligible people applied for that, right? And, and we think one of the reasons is um, costs. The other reason is that people weren't trustworthy of the government having their information. And so with that, um, you know, I, I hope that you all take that into consideration that if we want California's roads to be safe, that, um, that you know, we want as many people as licensed. And so a cost would take a, um, it would make an effect on, on people's decision whether or not to apply. So thank you. Thank you. Hello, hi, my name is Antonio. A-N-T-O-N-I-O, Bernabe, B-E-R-N-A-B-E. -E. I'm here today used to, uh, Second, and echo all the people here that this is needed as soon as possible. We need to stop the impounding, the injustice that is being there for many, many years, affecting our communities, affecting the income of low-income immigrant workers, uh, affecting their families. This has to stop, and we are willing to help you. All the organizations here, churches, nonprofits, we are willing to work with you to make this possible as soon for the community, as soon as possible for the community. Uh, basically, uh, it's been many years. This is, this is not about uh, people driving, it's about justice for the community. It's been a punishment for our community for many years. We don't know how that is being legal, you know, people being affected and they basically uh, people losing their cars from one day to the other, paying thousands of dollars to recover their cars sometimes, or sometimes not even having the ability to recover the cars. So that has to stop. We need to have a driver license as soon as possible, and we are willing to help you and work with you to make it possible. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Gabby Trejo, G-A-B-B-Y-T-R-E-J-O, and I'm with Sacramento Area Congregations Together Act, Federation of Pico, California. And I just wanted to echo what everybody else said. Um, really looking into medical records, you know, debit cards, um, library cards, um, that would be great. And please do not wait till January to implement this. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll be translating for him. Buenos días. Mi nombre es Axel Paredes. Pertenezco a Chirla de la Ciudad de Los Ángeles. Good morning. My name is Axel Paredes, and I belong with, I come with Chirla in, from L.A. Gracias al DMV por colaborar con la comunidad para que nosotros podamos llevar más seguramente a nuestros hijos a las escuelas. He wants to say thanks to the DMV for working with the community and collaborating so it can be safer for us to take our children to school. Question. Soy indocumentado. No tengo papeles. La comunidad inmigrante, ¿qué tanto va a salir afectada con dar la información al DMV frente a migración? I have a question for you. I am undocumented, I do not have papers. How will the undocumented community be affected by giving their personal information to the DMV and then a chance of getting it handed over to immigration? 
think you have to look at the provisions that are already in the law that have some restrictions on what can be done with the documentation and who we can hand the documentation over to. So we're going to follow the provisions that are in AB 60 that deals with who we can give documentation to. And I think there are some specific prohibitions that are in the law. So. Thank you. Um, can, can we get a spelling of his name, please? It's A-X-E-L, Axel Paredes, P-A-R-A-D-E-S. Thank you. Thank you, DMB. Hola, mi nombre es Olivia Daniel y para mí y para todos los inmigrantes es muy importante eso de la situación de, de dar las licencias. Hello, my name is Olivia Daniel, O-L-I-V-I-A-D-A-N-I-E-L, -I -I -E and for me and all the immigrants, this is a very important uh, issue with the driver's licenses. Bueno, en especial a mí y yo creo que a todos los inmigrantes, este, nos ha pasado lo que a mí me ha pasado. Este, en ocasiones este, que me han quitado la, el carro a mí y a mi esposo porque él trabaja en la bahía y yo vivo en Sacramento y el diario viaja a la bahía. So something that's happened to me and to many other immigrants as well is that um, we've had our cars taken away. Uh, her husband works in the valley, so he has to travel there and that's been an issue that they've had to deal with. Bueno, pues a mi esposo hace como dos meses le quitaron el carro y el costo de recogerlo y pagar la grúa y pagar donde se lo llevaron fueron de 595 dólares y no es la primera vez. So, so my husband uh, lost, had his car taken away about two months ago and the cost to pay the tow truck and where it was taken to and the storage was almost 600 dollars. <coughs> Bueno, nomás quiero que tomen en cuenta todo lo que nosotros inmigrantes pasamos. Um, <coughs> nosotros tenemos hijos y tenemos que llevarlos a diario a la escuela, a citas, y siempre está uno con el miedo de que lo puedan parar. So she just asked that you take into account and keep in mind all of the things that have happened to immigrants and continue to happen to them. You know, they have children, they need to take them to school, they need to take them to um, appointments. And uh, all this time they have the fear of being stopped and potentially losing their car. Y en otra ocasión, este, a mí me paró un policía, me quitó el carro sin ninguna compasión. Con mis niños chiquitos, yo me tuve que salir del carro y me lo quitaron y tuve que caminar largo tiempo. Y es injusto, es muy injusto. So in another occasion, um, she was driving with her young children and she was pulled over by a police officer for no reason and the car was taken away from them and they were left on the side of the road, her with her small children, and they had to walk for a long distance and it's just very unjust. Perdón, estoy muy nerviosa porque nunca he estado frente, pero nomás quiero que sepan lo que uno pasa y todo lo que pasamos todos porque no, no creo que sea la, la única. Que he pasado por eso. So she just says, excuse me, because she's feeling nervous. She hasn't spoken in an event like this before, but she just really wants you to take into account everything that has happened to, to our families and continues to happen to them. And please tell her that we appreciate her coming forward. Bueno, este, pues yo agradezco mucho que ojalá que muy pronto hagan posibilidad de eso porque es muy importante para nosotros. Nosotros estamos aquí, trabajamos, hacemos las cosas bien, hace, pagamos impuestos y bueno, pues ojalá que todo se haga realidad. Eso va a ser un paso muy grande y muy importante para todos nosotros los inmigrantes. Y gracias, es todo. So, she just wants to thank you again for, for allowing her to share her story, that this is something that's extremely important to, to her families, to, to the immigrants, that they're, they're here, they work, they pay taxes, and they just really hope that this becomes a reality and is something that can help our families. And that's everything. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Noe, N-O-E, Paramo, P-A-R-A-M-O. I'm with California Rural Legal Assistance Foundation. And, uh, 
I think you've gone beyond uh, just asking for documents to be used in this process as you hear the stories. So I will just share a story that I, I happened uh, where I attended a community meeting with some residents in this small town in the Central Valley, and they met with the local sheriff and the city manager and the mayor, and they're very concerned about these impoundments. And so they were asking for this moratorium that they don't impound these cars because they don't have the, the driver's license. Well, long story short, the sheriff said no. But we were able to get his, to exercise his judgment and, and direct that to his officers, that in this process, as we're leading up to this year of getting AB60 implemented and driver's license for individual applicants, that, that uh, you look at the situations that people are in, that there are hardships created when you take these cars away, that uh, there's mistrust in the police department. People are scared. And so this will also help law enforcement in exercising their work. And what came out about it is they agreed to work with the community, in this case, to educate people as this process goes along, and maybe we, we can get something addressed here in the long run. But this year is going to be a challenge all around for our communities. The communities were concerned because they felt they were targeted, profiled, discriminated against, and they challenged the sheriff and the mayor to address it. Of course, they denied they don't do that. But if you heard today, that's going on. So I think we just have to be real careful as we go forward with this. And in your position, that you hear that, and in implementing these regulations, make sure that that becomes across to our local law enforcement agencies. And also as it relates to um, the use of these documents as they're marked, the driver's license, that we're concerned as a legal office that how they'll be used in court, that they be used not to be admissible to prove a person's credibility or character because they're marked and they can identify a person as not having legal residency in the United States. So we also ask that they not be used in that way. Um, so that's a very important consideration because in the court of law or administrative process, that will uh, create a stigma to people who are judging them, whether it's a judge or a jury. So that's very important to consider. I think in the uh, other process around the application and the exams, that uh, you consider the person's language other than English in the application, oral, written, specifically as it relates to indigenous communities, and you addressed it. I think you looked at it. This is an issue that goes beyond Spanish, but other languages as well. So as that process goes forward, and I think you also looked at the documents. I think we, we verify the, uh, the DACA procedure that's being used. Um, also, um, a recent law, AB 1195, uh, that was passed this um, year that looks at accessing public records, criminal records for victims of crime. So this is an issue of, that's going on, that how can we come to a uh, consensus about what documents to use? And those there, it was you can use the, the passport or a matricula to access a, a police record. Um, I think in any and other relevant documents that are used to establish that a person lives here in the US, you've heard that. I don't know if my colleague wants to say anything. Thank I was you. I'm going to point out we, we hear your concern about the languages that the tests yes. are, are in, and currently we uh, do driver's license tests in over 33 languages. Yes. Okay. So it's just to reaffirm that, and the need is to go forward because it's going to increase. Okay. And I think you heard it over today. Thank you. Oral testing. Oral testing. Written and oral testing. Thanks. In Espanol. Oh, you're going to do it. En español, uh, lo que uh, nuestra organización, la Fundación de Asistencia Legal Rural de California, uh, está sugiriendo que uh, tengan las uh, entrevistas, exámenes orales, uh, porque hay muchas uh, personas uh, uh, que no tienen is that la facilidad. Okay. We have the translator there, so we're going to have her step forward and help you so that we can get the translation for the record. So. Está bien. And, and can we have her identify her name as well? Me llamo Juanita Ontiveros y soy de la Fundación de Asistencia Legal Rural de California. My name is Juanita Ontiveros. J-U-A-N-I-T-A, -A, last name O-N-T-I-V-E-R-O-S, and I am from the 
California Rural Legal Assistance Foundation. Uh, y estamos aquí uh, para sugerir um, que las licencias uh, lo, sean los exámenes de las licencias de manejar uh, sean uh, hechas oralmente. And I'm here, we are here to suggest that the um, oral tests for the driver's license would be en los lenguajes que se necesitan. Uh, no nomás en español, uh, pero tenemos comunidades en nuestra comunidad que hablan muchos otros lenguajes indígenas y, um, y, y esos lenguajes uh, deben de ser uh, también. Uh, that all the uh, tests would be not only in Spanish, but in other uh, languages that are needed. Other communities in our community speak uh, indigenous languages. Y esos exámenes uh, deben de ser uh, oral, porque hay muchos lenguajes en nuestras comunidades que no hay, uh, que no son escritos. And those exams should be oral because there are a lot of um, communities, languages in our communities that their languages are not written. Y, y también que no se vaya a usar las nuevas licencias de manejo uh, este, que están identificadas como para personas que están indocumentadas, que no se vayan a usar en una corte de leyes eh, de ninguna manera, que si se usan de evidencia en cualquier, en cualquier procedimiento legal, uh, se tiren uh, para afuera, porque uh, que no sean admitidas. So the, for the driver's license that are marked to not to be used on a court of law, that if they're going to use it as proof, um, to be thrown away, to not to be admitted. Gracias. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sheila Byers, S-H-E-L-I-A, last name B-Y-A-R-S. I'm from SEIU, I'm rec representing SEIU, I'm a DMV employee. And what I'd like to say is I think AB60, yes, is a good idea. We need to have as many licensed drivers on the road as possible. And I've been listening to a lot of, you know, different IDs that, you know, a lot of people would like to see, you know, as ways to prove identity. But listening to utility bills and check cashing cards, I mean, I know a utility bill for me does not establish residency because you can have your cousin's name on your utility bill just so that they can get a bill because maybe they screwed it up at their own house. So now you have your utility bill in your cousin's name. You can go to a check cashing place like Nick's and get a check cashing card. That does not establish residency. I've been with the DMV for 18 years and I've seen fraud out of control. If we're looking at other ways to establish residency and identity, I think we need to go deeper than that. So I don't have any issues with AB60. I think it's good to have as many licensed drivers on the road as we can. I work for driver safety. Part of my job is to keep the road safe. So if we're gonna look at other ways to establish identity, I think we need to go deeper than check cashing cards and utility bills. Thank you. Thank you. Jeanette Sunny Patin, J E A N N E T T E, last name Z A N I P A T I N. I'm a legislative attorney with the Mexican American Legal Defense and Educational Fund. I want to thank you again for making this public workshop possible. Um, thank you for meeting um, with us several months ago as well to talk about some of these issues. I just want to reiterate that a lot of folks have, had mentioned the need to be flexible with identity documents and both residency documents. There is guidance in terms of how this is done at the federal level. I'm also a practicing immigration attorney. Um, you know, immigrants come from all over the world. Many of them come with nothing in their pocket, no identity document. Um, but even the federal immigration law, um, even, even federal guidance provides the ability to provide um, several different types of documents, several different types of documentation to either establish a person's residency or identification. Um, there are processes in place that California could look to, especially with the DACA program that many of the, of the youth spoke about um, today. 
So um, in terms of being creative, and while I understand the need to ensure that these documents are authentic and that people say, um, people are who they say they are, there are processes in place that you all can look to that are, um, that are, that are tried and true and, um, and can even get through a, a really tough agency like, um, you know, like immigration. And so there, there are processes in place that we could look to. There are other ways that we could establish all the different categories that folks need to establish. And, um, you know, I just want to reiterate as well that there are many folks in our community that may not have these documents. So for those um, immigrant mothers and homemakers, um, victims of domestic violence that might have more difficulty getting these documents to um, provide some flexibility for these folks as well. And then lastly, just really quickly, um, uh, you know, we do need to strengthen the anti-discrimination language in, in, um, in the bill or via the regula regulatory process, ensure that, these, that the information is protected and that um, the folks that do have this license do not face unnecessary discrimination in, in, in any interactions they have either with law enforcement or, or other state agencies. Thank um, you. Uh, before you go, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. Um, at the email address that I mentioned earlier, that's on the bottom of the agenda, if there are some, some federal processes that you, you think that we should look, look at, if you wouldn't mind sending us sure. the, the citations to that at our email address, we will definitely, definitely take Thank a look you. at those. Thank you. Um, hello, my name is Miguel, my name is Miguel Molina, um, M-I-G-U-E-L-M-O-L-I-N-A. I am part of um, CHIRLA, the Coalition for Humane and Immigrant Rights of Los Angeles. Um, one of the things that I want to see um, from the DMV is a vigorous campaign evolving on outreaching so we can make sure that a lot of our community benefit from this program or from your service. And one of the other ways that um, you guys could go about it is also detailing um, the privacy protection, racial profiling, and discrimination so our community could start trusting um, the government itself so we won't be filled with fear and knowing exactly what those information are going to be used for. And also um, co um, following up with, well, not joining with organizations so you guys could um, reach out to more of our community members and more of our members could benefit. And also maybe even having a DMV on wheels so you guys could go um, further and, and uh, more of our community member will de definitely be there and be helped out. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Stephanie Kame, S-T-E-P-H-A-N-I-E-K-A-M-E-Y. I come to you today representing the Central Valley. Um, I have a couple of points that I want to talk, and some of them are echoing what people have already said before me. One is the documentation. Um, we've said, you know, we want baptismal and stuff from church. We really need something that we can connect to um, that aren't official documents things like, you know, going to our consulates, not only do you have to go back home sometimes, but even just driving four hours from one part of the, of the state to another part of the state, you know, it's very onerous on us, um, especially driving to these places without licenses that we can't have right now. And then, you know, we have other things in place where we get our cars impounded. Um, that's a very big problem for us where we come from um, a very rural area, and there's not a lot of DMV in place. There's not a lot of consulates in the area. They're, mainly in metropolitan areas. And then even to go, how um, the guy before me just said, um, going to DMV locations that are pretty far from where we're at, at home, um, that can be very onerous on us as well. So looking for DMV on wheels or placing you know, DMV locations where typically they weren't before, um, just for other reasons where there, there are a big um, group of community, um, of immigrant communities, um, looking to place um, DMV locations there. Um, the second thing is, um, maybe having some kind of special training for DMV employees to be able to look at these documents and treat us with respect. Um, we're really concerned about you know, anti-discriminatory practices um, that will be go going on when even just confronting a DMV official. We understand that you can't you know, tell the police how to act with us, but um, the DMV employees maybe you know, um, making sure that we get treated with dignity and humanity when we come in there and there's nothing going, um, you know, no problems against us just by coming into the office. Um, and lastly is the, the test that we would be taking, which would be the driving test. We understand that there's languages that you, that you have various different languages for the written exa exam and maybe the oral exam, but um, I don't think right now when somebody takes a, a driving exam, they can have an interpreter in the car with them. So that would be something that we would need some kind of, some kind of help with where somebody would have to be able to speak the language that the person dri driving the car taking the test would need to speak as well. Thank you. Thank you. 
Buenos, buenos días, mi nombre es Manuel Carranza. Vengo a exponer que no estoy de acuerdo en que se les dé licencia a, las, a los indocumentados. ¿Por qué razón? Digo que um, su, su nombre es, um, his name is Miguel Carranza. Manuel, M-A-N-U-E-L. Okay, maybe you can have somebody else translate. Oh, no, no, let's, have the, let's have the translator come forward, please. Okay. Mi nombre es Manuel Carranza y no estoy de acuerdo en que se les dé licencia a los indocumentados. My name is Manuel Carranza and I'm not in agreement that the undocumented should have a driver's license. Porque el gobierno federal nos está poniendo muros por exponiendo a nuestros ciudadanos para que nos protejan a los que vivimos en este país. Because the government, federal government, is building walls. Hold on. Listen. We're here to take comments from everyone, so let's respect what other people have to say. Thank you. Okay. Y el gobierno del estado les abre la puerta muy fácilmente. El indocumentado va a venir a pedir su licencia y el gobierno del estado simplemente se las va, se las va a dar. And the, the government, the state government, is making it easy. Undocumented people are going to come, and the government is going to give them the license. Porque al pararse al DMV, el, el indocumentado va a pedir su licencia y se la van a dar y van a andar libremente paseando por todo, todo el país o andando libremente por todo el estado. Because they're going to stop, but the undocumented is going to stop by DMV and they're going to give them their license and they're going to be happy driving around for, around the country and everywhere. Actualmente pasan muchas personas por la, por la línea. A pesar de, del muro, a pesar de la vigilancia que hay, entran asesinos. Yo, te, yo soy padre de cinco niños y estoy preocupado porque una persona indocumentada adquiera una licencia fácilmente. The interpreter needs a repetition. ¿Me puede repetir eso, por favor? Yo soy padre, yo soy padre de, de, de familia, mm -hmm. tengo cinco hijos y estoy preocupado porque a una persona indocumentada se le dé licencia. I'm a father of five children and I'm worried that you give a driver's <coughs> license to an undocumented uh, person and um, many people cross the line and criminals come. Sí. Si a esa persona y no se, se les llega a dar licencia, pido, bueno, es mi opinión, que se les dé, que se, se les obligue a los consulados a, a pedirles eh, el, ¿cómo se le llama? El, el récord de su país de origen. If you give the driver's license to that undocumented person, I request, well, it's my opinion that you ask the consulate of the, that person, where that person is from, uh, to get the record of their history from their country. Can I, can I ask you to get a spelling of his last name, please? Carranza, Americano, Ciudadano Americano. Carranza, um, American citizen, it would be C A R R A N Z A. Okay. I, I, one thing I want to point out is um, as the Department of Motor Vehicles, we are required by statute to enforce the laws that are enacted by the legislature. Uh, this is a law that has been enacted, and unless we get a determination by a court of appeal that it is not enforceable, we have an obligation to both implement it and enforce it. And so the purpose of the hearing today is to, to accept recommendations and suggestions on how we are going to carry out both our constitutional and statutory obligation to enforce a law that has been enacted by the legislature. So we, ap we appreciate your comments, 
but at this point, we have an obligation to uh, basically prepare regulations that are required by that law. Okay, estoy de acuerdo, pero como ciudadano americano no no estoy de acuerdo en que en que pase esa ley. Sí. Um, yeah, pastor. I am, I am, um, I am in agreement, but as an American citizen, I'm, I don't agree that the, that law passes. Okay, si ya pasó. But it already passed. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm going to have to cut off your comments because we have no control over the law that's already been enacted. Um, if you have some concerns about its passage, I would encourage you to maybe uh, contact your legislative representative, but it is already a law that's passed. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Buenos dias a todos. Good morning to everybody. Good morning. Um, and I want to thank you for voicing our opinions, um, whether there are, whatever our beliefs are or convictions are. Quiero dar las gracias porque podemos venir a expresarnos de lo que sentimos y lo que queremos. I'm a single parent. Oh, can you give us your name too, please? Oh, Yolanda Contreras, Y-O-L-A-N-D-A. -A. Last name, C-O-N-T-R-E-R-A-S. I'm a single parent. I was born in Mexico. I have four children. And I work a lot with the schools, my schools, as a volunteer. And we have a lot, a lot of diversity. It's not just the Latinos, it's a lot of diversity. One of my schools where my kids go, we have 967 students. There are 17 languages and dialects spoken there. And we're talking in the Elk Grove Unified School District. What I'm trying to say is that there are a lot of parents out there that would love to have this opportunity and would love to have the driver's license. Esta es una gran oportunidad para los padres de familia que no tienen licencia que puedan obtenerla. And I've been hearing to have safe roads or safe driving. I'm sorry. I don't, don't, I, I, I apologize, but you might have a dr driver's license and you were born here, but you could be a reckless driver. Puede usted tener su licencia, haber nacido aquí, pero si usted no maneja con cuidado, no importa de dónde sea. La ley es la ley para los indocumentados, así como para los que nacieron aquí. The law is for undocumented and even for the people that were born here. And I just, um, regarding the, um, um, how, to, how to prove I believe that the consulate would be able to help. Um, I also believe that bringing in a, a SMUD bill isn't going to do it. I'm a notary public as well in the state of California. Uh, so there was a lot of times where I saw driver's license and I had to reject them. So what is doing to our community is that because they cannot obtain a driver's license, they go out in the streets and get a driver's license, which makes it even worse. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate the fact that this law has passed. So eventually I know there's a lot of stipulations that need to be brought uh, and to be put together. And I just hope and I pray that it'll be before January 15th. Le pido a Dios que sea antes de enero 2015 Yo sé que hay faltan muchas cositas que se tienen que arreglar, pero eso el poder tener la licencia de manejar ustedes y que puedan decir tengo mi licencia, puedo ir a eventos al a la escuela de mis hijos, I can go to my kids school kids events. Why? Because they have a legal document that they can drive and that they're if they get pulled over is because they probably ran a red light. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? So the law is the law for those that um, have driver's license, for those that do not. And I appreciate the fact that you're giving us this time to give our comments and our expressions and, and taking consideration that the sooner you guys put it together, the more, the more happier we will be. 
and I'm also a U.S. citizen, born in Mexico, U.S. citizen, and aquí estoy apoyando a mi gente, porque we come from all backgrounds, all backgrounds, and I'll just leave it there. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. Hello. Good morning. My name is Susana Aguilera Marrero, Susana Aguilera Marrero, spelled S-U-Z-A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, last name hyphenated, first last name, A-G-U-I-L-E-R-A -E hyphen, Marrero, M-A-R-R-E-R-O. I'm the president of the Women's Peace Officers Association of California, but more importantly, I'm a member of the human race. I first want to go ahead and congratulate everyone here who worked really hard to pass AB60. And I'd like to thank you, the DMV, for putting on this forum, the State Secretary for allowing us to have this area to hold the forum, and the thoughtfulness that you put in by making a microphone available and opening it up to everybody and also outlining the rules so that there is respect for one another. That's critical. Um, I think that the conversation has begun towards the end of making policy. Uh, their aware awareness is very important. I saw someone wearing a t-shirt that said engage, educate, and empower. I feel confident in the competency of everyone working together so that we can go ahead and provide identification through driver's license to as many that can provide the documentation needed. I also believe that you can do this with integrity without compromising the way that we develop policy here in California. Thank you very much for giving me the time to speak. Thank, Thank you. you. Good morning. My name is Judith, J-U-D-I-T-H, Vasquez, B-A-S-Q-U-E-Z. I'm coming to say like, I'm glad they passed the, the law for the driving license because anyways, the people are driving on the road. So we want to make sure whoever is driving is driving safe, you know, with the, the test and all the identification, like uh, whoever is driving is the right pe person, not somebody else. And, the, and for the reason I came in to say some ideas, you know, to work with the uh, counselors to make sure they have uh, their certificates and IDs, probably criminal record, because when we apply for our driver license, they have our social security, and from, for sure they know who we are, who we are you know, I'm, I'm a criminal or no, they knew. So the same thing. And I'm coming from a, a country, I don't want to say the name. I'm, you know, I love my country, but I don't want to say what the name uh, country it is right now because it's very sad there are a lot of crimes over there. A lot of um, the government, sometimes it's impossible to do something, even if they want it. It's, it's very bad. And I come here because I love the, you know, it's, it's not too much corruption. In my country, whoever wants a birth certificate, it's easy to get it. It's easy. Whoever wants criminal record, it's easy. Whoever wants driver license, it's so easy. They just say, give me your photo ID, this is your driver license. I have some, I know some friends, they can get driver license, and they don't have to go to Mexico. They just mail it to them. I knew. It is very bad because it's my country. And I love this country. I want everything more safety. So work together, work with the counselors, make sure whoever supply is that person because in case you have a, an accident, you know, we, you know where they live, where they come from, you know that. Right now, if we have an accident with those person, they just far away, they go, they live. Who are, who are they? They don't know. So it's better, it's more money for the state. You know, we need it right now. It's nothing to do with the, like uh, immigration, it's nothing. It's totally separate. It's just for driving license. It can be like for ID, for, you know, because they have the picture ID. That's it. No for work, no for nothing. Just for drive. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Muy buenos días. Mi nombre es Moises Alfaro. Good morning, my name is Moises Alfaro. Uh, spell, please. Uh, M-O-I-S-E-S. A-L-F-A-R-O. Thank you. La razón que estoy aquí 
como cualquiera de nosotros de los indocumentados, estamos de buena fe y necesitamos manejar. The reason I'm here as an undocumented individual and other undocumented people here is in good faith because we need to drive. Ignoramos a todos los contrarios que siendo de nuestra raza se expresan de esa manera porque verdaderamente ellos vinieron con lo mismo. Yo en mi país de origen he manejado y he sabido respetar y nunca he tenido más récord en mi país de origen en manejo. We ignore all people who are against this. Um, because me, myself, from in my country of origin, I was a good driver when I was capable of driving. I have a good driving record in my country of origin. Así como nosotros, que hemos sido, como dicen, portadores de las vías, hemos enfrentado problemas, pero los seguimos enfrentando todavía. Ojalá que se venga mañana mismo, el primero de enero, y tener que manejar todos nosotros, porque verdaderamente sí lo necesitamos, por el bien de nuestros hijos, por el bien de nuestros trabajos y por el bien de nuestros traslados por un lado y otro. Nos, si nos consideran que podemos salir fuera del Estado, qué bueno para poder expresar nuestra manifestación de labor, trabajo, lucha por el bien de este país. Okay. Um, we... Ya lo voy a repetir. Ok. Bueno. Más corto. Ya, mire, este, no, no, lo que yo quiero decir, estaba diciendo que yo prácticamente todos nosotros vamos a trabajar, manejar, por manejar y todo lo que quieran, pero nosotros vamos a trabajar en base de manejar, llevar nuestros hijos, ir a nuestros trabajos tranquilamente y si es posible que podemos salir fuera del Estado. Qué bueno sería para poder nosotros trasladar un lado a otro por el desarrollo de este país. Okay. Um, the main reasons why we need these, the driver's license is so we can be able to go to work, so we can transport our children, and if possible, to travel outside the state. Esperemos que realmente muchas personas que están en nuestra contra, no lo estamos, digamos, estamos de buena fe en este país. Estamos, aportamos más de lo que nosotros podemos hacer. Si hemos dejado por una vida de un desarrollo, lo vamos a demostrar. Si no deja con manejar tranquilamente, haceremos desarrollo en este país. Es todo que puedo decir. Muchas gracias. Um, if you let us drive, uh, we can give even more to this state, to this country than we what we already do. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to interrupt for a second. We have um, we're pleased to have Senator Leo here, who's taken time out of his busy schedule to come in and make some comments this morning. So I'd like to ask him to come forward to the microphone now. Thank you very much. Assemblymember Luis Alejo, author of AB60, I'm glad to be here today. So first of all, it's a, it's, it's a historic day because this is a, uh, the first community meeting on, how to, um, on seeking public input, letting people give their voice on what the regulations should look like. So it's actually working towards implementing a historic law that was signed last uh, October 3rd by Governor Jerry Brown. And I want to thank the DMV for holding these hearings um, here in Sacramento. Another, one, another one's coming up in Los Angeles. But this is a big thing for so many immigrant communities throughout California. But there is also a lot of work to be done into the future. And as many have expressed here, there's a, certainly a big need. But we, um, I'm here to offer my support. And I want to really thank groups like Siren and Chirla and Presente.org who work with us to make this a reality. But the hard work is up ahead, and that's why the DMV is having this, these meetings, because they have to draft uh, regulations, emergency and permanent regulations. They have a big task of having to open some additional offices, hiring more staff, um, but they need to get your input. And I'm glad that they're reaching out to hear the voices of the community of so many groups who have fought for this, this change in the law for 20 years now. Um, primeramente le quiero dar las gracias a toda la comunidad por venir aquí, hoy es algo histórico porque ahora no estamos hablando que es, si se va a hacer esto una realidad, estamos a, hablando de implementar esta ley este año, pero hay mucho trabajo que hacer, el DMV está um, um, for, formulando estas reglas que se requiere bajo la ley que se aprobó, también necesitan oficina, oficinas adicionales y también um, um, 
um, emplear a más trabajadores pa, para procesar esta avalancha de aplicaciones que va a llegar. So, aquí estamos como legisladores latinos, el Latino Legislative Caucus, para dar nuestro apoyo, pero también uh, decirle que también hay mucho trabajo que necesitamos hacer todos nosotros. De, ya cuando se aprueban las reglas, y educar a nuestras comunidades, cuáles van a ser los, todos los documentos que se van a aceptar, cuál va a ser el costo, cuáles van a ser los cambios en la licencia, pero lo más importante es motivar a nuestra comunidad a estudiar para ese examen. Eso es lo que ya pueden hacer ahorita mismo. Um, ir al DMV, sacar el libro o bajarlo, uh, sacarlo por el internet y ya estudiar así, llegando a la primera junta, ya cuando comienza este programa, ya pueden uh, pasar en la primera vez. So I want to say there's a lot of work to be done, but there's some things that we can do right now. Um, I'm encouraging all the community that they don't have to wait till the program is implemented and later this year, at the end of this year, but they could already pick up a book at their DMV offices, they could download the booklet on the internet to start studying so that hopefully on that first visit they could pass that written exam. The more that we prepare, the more work closely that we work with DMV uh, and with each other, we're going to have a more successful implementation of AB60. So I want to thank the DMV for taking this time to allow all the community to come here from all, think people have come here from all over Northern California because it's that important to our community. To, for, we fought for over 20 years to give the opportunity for hardworking immigrant families to be able to drive lawfully on our roads and highways. And I always tell people, we're not giving them anybody a license, they're having the opportunity to earn it, to take the RIN exam, the driving exam, have auto insurance, just like everyone else. That's all our communities have asked for. And I want to thank the DMV for your hard work, but you're not alone. We're here to offer support, input to make sure we have the best regulations possible, the most protections possible for the immigrant community. Those are real valid concerns, but This is what it's about, uh, letting the community come and weigh in what that should look like. So on behalf of the Latino Legislative Caucus, we're here to offer our support, knowing that there's a lot of work ahead, but we're going to be here to support so that it's successful when this program starts. So thank you very much. Muchas gracias a todos que llegaron y lo hicimos junto. Si se pudo. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Jose Camey. J-O-S-E-K-A-M-E-Y. My daughter will help me with the translation. Yo vine aquí en 1978 y la primer identificación la saqué en enero de 1979 del DMV. But I came here in 1978 and the first ID I ever got was in 1979 by the DMV. Tengo un récord de manejo muy limpio en los últimos 30 años sin infracciones. He has a clean driving record um, from the last 30 years without any tickets. Eh, trabajé en ranchos, trabajé también en radio. He worked in ranches and also in radio. Y del trabajo del rancho, yo quisiera que se acercaran con programas para darle el incentivo a la gente de los ranchos, que hay muchas gente que a veces trabajan 50, 100 o 200, pero tienen miedo. Y, y si ustedes se acercan a ellos, pueden solicitar cartas del ranchero de recomendación para sus trabajadores. He wants to encourage the DMV to do an outreach program out into rural areas where there are a lot of people that are scared to come to any kind of government agency and also to approach the ranchers, the ones who give them the jobs, to have them write affidavits for them. Tengo como experiencia también que en, en 1986, en la reforma migratoria de ese tiempo, este con una carta de recomendación de no récords de la policía donde yo vivía, este, me ayudó mucho para, para poder arreglar mi estancia legal. He um, fixed papers in 1986 with um, the other immigration law and um, he had uh, dos cartas? two recommendation letters that they, that they could get um, use record, letter, excuse me, letters of recommendation and also um, of record that he had no pol criminal activity from the police department. Este, yo apoyo mucho la, la licencia y las identificaciones de parte del DMV porque considero en mi experiencia viviendo aquí ya 36 años, este, he visto que es positivo y en el tiempo que yo saqué la primera identificación fue solo con un documento de la escuela y mi acta de nacimiento cuando, que se requirió bien fácil. He said he supports driver's licenses because he sees the positive effect it has on the community. And que saqué la, la primera identificación solamente con una ID de la escuela. 
ID. He got his first ID with only um, with only his birth certificate and an ID from school that he was in at the time. And they didn't ask for they didn't ask for any other kind of documentation for that. Y por último, este, si se puede hacer algo con los corralones, yo vengo del condado de Fresno y por un mes por un carro que recojan cobran alrededor de 1300 dólares un estacionamiento sin, sin nada de comodidades, puras piedras y cobran más que un apartamento de renta. So he's also asking that um, there be something done about the impounds that happen um, in, in our community. He said um, in Fresno County it's about upwards of $1,300 for just um, one month that they impound your car and it's about as much as, twice as much as the rent that he pays. Yo he ido con muchas personas a recoger sus carros y eso es lo que les cobran. Este, muchas gracias. He's been with a lot of people. Um, he's gone to help a lot of people pick up their cars from the impoundments, and that's what they charge. And thank you very much. Thank you. Susanna Galera Marrero again. Just wanted to let you know that I failed to mention I'm a retired captain, and retirement cards should also be used as a form of identification as well. I want to tell you one more time, yes, you can, and forward in Spanish, si se puede, y adelante. Uh, thank you again. My name is Leonel Flores, L-E-O-N-E-L, Flores, F-L-O-R-E-S, uh, from Fresno, UNIR, and my first coalition for immigrants rights. Uh, you say I want to tell my friends, immigrants uh, are not criminals. Nosotros no, no somos criminales. Somos seres humanos que cometemos errores, ¿verdad? We have mistakes, but we are not criminals. Uh, criminal is the system who oppresses their taxpayers. Criminal is the system that oppresses those who pay taxes, right? And we pay taxes. We have other three recommendations. Uh, one is uh, we want a letter of claim. Letter of claim. You know, uh, during the 1983 uh, of claim. You know, during the process, before the process, uh, I want to, if you can put the access on DMV uh, uh, to the people who is not here. Uh, express their opinion or their concerns about the process on the driver license. Uh, other is uh, uh, during the process, you know, I, I, I don't want to generalize that all the workers of, DM, of DMV, they try, you know, bad to the people, but some of, some of, uh, of the workers of DMV, sometimes they came with bad humor, you know, and sometimes they don't try like, la, like, like humans. So, so it's better, you know, they receive a tra trainer with a, uh, to understand the, 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 the cultural of immigrants and, and also, you know, to, to uh, the people have the opportunity to say it when they, they don't feel very comfortable on the DME offices. Uh, other uh, suggestion is many of us, uh, we own like two, three tickets because it's a, a vicious, right? Uh, you don't have driver license, you receive a ticket, you own a ticket, you don't have money to pick up the car, you own a ticket, the, the, the next uh, month or two months, uh, you go to some places where the uh, of, uh, police officers, they are more uh, <laughs> discriminatory people. Uh, so again and again. So many of, the, many of us, we own like two or three tickets. I don't want DMV, you know, to restrict these people who own a ticket to don't provide their license. If these people is paying, you know, in payments, the tickets, uh, 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 to you can get you can to, to provide that driver license. No, no, uh, the people uh, DMV don't wait until these people pay the whole of the tickets because they can take like one, two, or three years. So I hope I hope uh, 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 don't take in consideration the last of the past tickets uh, or the the uh, money that they own in the past uh, when we receive a, a ticket to to don't drive uh, with with a driver license. So we, thank you. We, we appreciate that comment. Just one thing to keep in mind that when we're implementing this law, we have to implement it consistent with other laws that are in the vehicle code. So, so that suggestion, there may not be anything that we can do about that because there may be requirements that are in other provisions of the vehicle code. So, so one of the things to think about is that, yes, we are implementing AB 60 um, and we're holding these hearings, but one of the things that we can't do is change or amend or, or somehow interpret other provisions of the vehicle code um, that have additional requirements. I will translate for her. Thank you. Buenos dias, mi nombre es Celia Ramos. My name is Celia Ramos, um, C-E-L-I-A, last name R-A-M-O-S. Pertenezco a la Iglesia de Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe en San Jose, California. I belong to Our Lady of Guadalupe Church from San Jose, California. 
una comunidad hispana migrante. A community made of uh, immigrant Hispanics. Primeramente, gracias por escucharnos. Thank you very much for listening to us. Nos gustaría que todos los servicios fueran en nuestro idioma natal. I would like to see that all the services are provided in our primary language, in our own language, native. Y a un precio accesible para todos. And to um, pay an uh, accessible fee. Gracias por escucharnos. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, my name is Michelle Turan. That's M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E, -E, last name T-E-R-A-N. And I'm here today with the United Farm Workers representing the thousands of farm workers that help feed this nation. As you know, farm workers travel throughout the state and also even to other states in order to help feed us all. So for us, it's going to be very important that union ID cards are taken into consideration. This is something that all of our members have, and it also provides a picture. And we also uh, just wanted to say it's also very important that the language barrier, um, that there be an option for Spanish speakers and also any other languages, um, native languages, very important as well. On behalf of the farm worker com community, we thank you. Thank you. Desde el año 2007 no he vuelto a manejar porque me quitaron mi carro por no tener licencia. Since 2007, I haven't been able to drive. Oh, Axel Paredes. Sorry. Since 2007, I, I haven't or I, I haven't been able to drive uh, because they took my car away. Quiero decirle al DMV que vemos muchos inmigrantes que aprendemos a vivir en este sistema. I want to tell the DMV that there's a lot of immigrants who, uh, who learn how to live in the system. He andado todo el tiempo en base desde el 2007 hasta el día de hoy. Y agradezco que nos den licencias, pero quiero decirles que estamos respetando también la ley del DMV. Since 2007 till today, I use public transportation. Um, I want to tell the DMV that we do, um, that we, we do uh, respect the laws that are now, and that is why I use public transportation. And I also want to thank you. En mi país de origen, yo soy driver professional. En América, driver bike. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Philip Cosby, P-H-I-L-I-P, C-O-S-B-Y. A member of SFOP, Peninsula Interfaith Action, out of Mountain View. Years ago, the state of California issued IDs and driver's licenses without requiring, you know, a social security number. And believe it or not, many people still in California have those old licenses which have since expired. I was wondering if, if that expired license would provide a very suitable form of identification for the issuance of a new driving permit. We haven't made a determination with respect to that, but we appreciate that as a good suggestion. And secondly, will it be possible to also get a commercial license under the driving permit, or is this only for Class C? Right, I think that if you look at the provisions of AB 60, we're specifically precluded under the law because there are federal provisions that go towards the, the issuance of a commercial license. Right, thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Diana Colin, D-I-A-N-A-C-O-L-I-N. I'm a statewide organizer with CHIRLA, the Coalition for Humane Immigrant Rights of LA. And um, I, I want to say thank you because I once was an undocumented driver, an unlicensed driver, and I got to know what it's like to be a licensed driver. And just let me tell you, having a cop car behind you, but knowing you'll be fine and you will have your car the next day is one of the best feelings in the world. So I do thank you. And um, I wanted to talk about some of the requirements that should be taken into consideration. As you may or may not know, a lot of our community is very involved within, a, within in the parks, in the church, in our children's schools. Um, and they have been for years as volunteers. 
Um, and I think a letter of identification from those schools that have known us and have watched us grow, especially talking about my parents, um, it should really be taken into consideration because we are very involved in state organizations um, that, that can provide that letter and can be, can be, yeah, thank you, sorry. Thank you. We're gonna take one more speaker. It's, it's almost noon, um, so we're gonna break for a lunch hour. Um, but before I do that, we had three other topics, and I know we've been free-ranging this morning, so I think we've gotten a lot of comments. So um, after this speaker, I'll, get us, I'll, I'll ask you all if there's any other people who we haven't heard from, who have issues that they wanna bring up, and then we can make a determination if we need to come back after a lunch hour. So please go ahead. Uh, good morning, my name is Olga Cordero, OLGA. C-R-L-O, uh, and I have my translator here. <laughs> um, uh, tengo 25 años viviendo en los Estados Unidos, pagando taxes. My name is Olga Cordero, and I have been living here for 25 years paying taxes. Pagamos taxes como cualquier otra persona, además tenemos negocio. I pay taxes like any other person, and plus I have a business. Pero aún así, este, todos los días me arriesgo yo uh, llevando a mis hijos al doctor, a las escuelas, a reuniones, actividades que mis hijos hacen en las escuelas. I always risk everything by having to take my kids to school, going to work, going to different uh, meetings for different organizations I belong to. Es bien triste para mis hijos, especialmente el que más de tres veces me han quitado el carro, bajarlos bajo la lluvia, el frío, el sol y llevarlos millas caminando. It's very sad for my children because three times they have taken my car away while they were with me and we had to walk in the rain for miles um, without a car. Uh, esas, esa, este, eh, estoy pidiendo yo que sean considerados con la cuota este, por más de 11 millones que estamos con las mismas necesidades. Eh, si pagaría más sería reducir a lo mejor un paseo a mis hijos un fin de semana. I want you to take into consideration the quota you're thinking about uh, because if it would go higher, be higher, it take into consideration that we are fam a family and it'd be less money spent um, towards my children. Uh, mis hijos no saben de vacaciones largas por mucho tiempo por el mismo motivo de que yo he pagado a uh, miles de dólares porque me han quitado el carro, pagar el ticket, más aparte tener la grúa estacionada por mucho tiempo mi carro. My children don't know of long-term vacations because we've never had the funds for it. I've always had to pay my tickets um, due to no driver's license and the money that it costs to ha take the car out of the impound. Y le quiero dar gracias al DMV, a todas las personas que votaron, que dieron su voz, y este, son consideradas porque todos tenemos la misma necesidad como personas humanas. I want to thank the DMV and all the members that voted for the and are helping with this bill um, to take us undocumented people into consideration. Yes, todo. Muchísimas gracias. At this point, I'm gonna I'm gonna break for lunch. Um, if if I can see a show of hands of people who we haven't heard from who would like to, okay, we will come back at. We're gonna just break until. We're going to break until 1 o'clock, and so we will resume uh, promptly at 1 o'clock. Thank you.